I almost said good morning out of habit, but welcome to our confirmation service 2020. We are so glad to see you all. I am so glad to see the top half of everyone's faces. I trust that we are all smiling under our masks, and we are so excited that we are going to finally, finally, finally welcome the confirmation class of 2020 into membership at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. If we haven't met, my name is Christina Turner, and I'm associate pastor at Wrightsville. And along with our senior pastor, Doug Lane, we had the opportunity of walking with your youth um, through this strange, strange confirmation year. I'm not sure anyone quite knew this time last year what we would be doing today. We would be saying, well, what is that on your face? Um, what is a Zoom? But we are so grateful for God who has empowered us to keep doing this. We talk with um, the confirmands about how the church is not a building, the church is the people. So just look around around you. All right, you're not looking around. We, we got a couple minutes, you know. This is church right here with all of us gathered together. And so we are so grateful that you are here. We are going to be giving instructions throughout the service. And so we'll kind of pause in, in different spots. And this service is also um, going to be taped. Thank you to Jack Kilborn, who is recording it, so that our congregation, yep, so that our congregation can share in the joy of welcoming you into membership, and so that you can share it with family and friends near and far and all of that. And so now I just invite you to, um, to maybe place your feet on the ground to settle yourself in to this time of worship. And would you pray with me? Gracious God, we are so grateful for the gift of your love. We are so grateful for the gift of each other, for the gift of community. God, maybe we had taken this gift of being part of church for granted. But Lord, we are so grateful that the church is not a building, but the church is the body of Christ and who we are gathered together in your name. We pray your blessing on all of these youth, these confirmands who will be confirmed or baptized. And we ask, God, that you would be glorified and worshipped in this place. We ask all these things in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. And now I invite you um, to say with me, if you, if you would like to get out your bulletin, the Apostles' Creed. This is something we have studied all year in confirmation about what we believe, and so I encourage you to say the Apostles' Creed with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> In my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart, in my heart. In my heart, in my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be more alive in my heart.
Thank you, Kelly. Good to see everybody. I uh, appreciate everybody being out. Um, first time we've been able to worship together in person in seven months. And uh, what a wonderful way to, to be able to celebrate by confirming the class of 2020. Um, some of y'all have grown seven inches since we last met. Um, it's very cool to see everybody today. Our scripture lesson comes from the book of James, which is a New Testament book near the back. And James writes in chapter 2, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, eat your fill, and you do not supply their bodily needs, what good is that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I by my works will show you my faith. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you senseless person, that faith apart from works is barren? Was not our ancestor Abraham justified by works when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was brought to completion by the works. Thus the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Likewise, was not Rahab the prostitute also justified by works when she welcomed the messengers and sent them out by another road? For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Almighty and everlasting God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts tonight be acceptable in your sight, for you are truly our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So this passage that I just read from James has a great deal that we need to pay attention to if we are trying to strive to live as Christians. We talk about not playing favorites in the church based on human prejudices and distinctions. Um, In this case, in James, he's talking about not making, making sure you don't have any distinctions between rich and poor. But I want to focus on that line in the passage that says, so faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. And I want to talk about how that relates to our beliefs as United Methodists. It's been a year now since we had that first introductory meeting with your parents and began our confirmation journey together. And due to COVID, it's been five months since we had our last class together on Zoom. But I want you to go back and think about some of the things we've learned over this last year because we're going to make a pledge to put all of that into practice tonight. Now you might think it's odd to start with a Bible passage about the need for work since one of the most basic Methodist beliefs is that we are saved not by our works but by our faith in Jesus Christ. And if you would give me only one word to sum up the entire theology of John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, I believe that word would be grace. We talked about this early on in the class, but Wesley firmly believed we are saved by grace, not by works. Nevertheless, along with that belief, from the very beginning, Methodists have believed that the right and faithful response to having been saved by grace is to put our faith in action, to have our faith be evident in all that we do. And so I want us to think about a list of words tonight, and they are prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. If you've ever been to a service where we welcome new members into the church, and that list sounds pretty familiar, when you join a United Methodist Church, you are asked the question, as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Not only are the new members who are joining the church asked to make that promise, But the rest of the congregation is asked to renew their promise as well. And the way I see it, it's a promise to put our faith into action. To not have a dead faith, but to commit ourselves to works that are evidence of a sincere and vital faith. The specific list of prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. They might be uniquely United Methodists, but I think those words need to be put into practice for anybody who's a member of any church and by anyone who desires to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Today you've been given something, a compass. It's in your swag bag. 
And this compass is there to remind you what is your true north. What it is what, that will help you move along the path that God wants you to go. And your true north, of course, is Jesus. And to follow Jesus is what it means to be a Christian. And how do we put that into practice? Well, first of all, through prayer. We promise to participate in the ministry of the church through our prayers. And you've probably heard tons of stories, maybe it's the story of your own life, of people that have said that the only way they made it through a difficult time in their life was because of prayer. Either the strength they found through their own prayers or through knowing that someone else was praying for them. I, I remember in my own life, when I was a, a younger person, about half my age, I went to my grandmother and I said, uh, Grandmother, I'm, I'm thinking about becoming a United Methodist pastor. And she says, well, gosh, it's about time I've been praying about that for years. I had no idea my grandmother had been praying for that. The power of prayer is important. We pray because prayer is powerful and because we need to pray. Even Jesus knew that he could not get along without talking to God, without finding the strength and guidance that comes from the Heavenly Father. We are asked as United Methodists to pray. No matter how busy you might be, you can always support the church by praying. Praying for the ministry of the church, praying for the broader church of Jesus Christ. Pray for people that you know need prayer, whether they are people in the church or people who have never heard the good news of Jesus. Prayer is so important, not only because it connects us to God, but because it also connects us to each other. The second promise you make as United Methodists is to support the ministry of the church by your presence. That means showing up. Now that's kind of tricky nowadays, right? But the church has not stopped for even one minute because of this COVID crisis. You all know that we immediately moved from being in a classroom to going to confirmation classes by Zoom. And you still showed up. I was so proud of your participation because that was no one's preferred way to learn. And yet you did it anyway. We asked members to be involved in the life of the church. Each member, whether they've been here for 50 years or have just barely been involved and are brand new, needs to know that they matter, that they make a difference. It's important to be a, a part of the body of Christ, to worship, to be connected to others, to care for others, and know that others care for you. Beyond being present at worship and other church activities, I think there's another way to support the ministry of the church with your present presence, and that is to be present with others so that they know that you care. We are called to be the hands and feet and eyes and ears of Christ to be the very presence of Christ in the lives of other folks who might be hurting. The third way we support the ministry of the church is through our gifts. Each of you has been given one or more spiritual gifts, um, and we talked about this for an entire class back in January, if you can remember that far back. God is inviting you to use those gifts now. Now, you don't have to wait until you're 18 or until you're out of college or until you're an older adult anything like that. God has given you gifts to share with the church to build up the body of Christ now. When we talk about the fourth word, service, we mean the use of our time and talents and treasure within the church or on behalf of the church. Service could be acolyting or ushering or singing in the praise band or reading scripture and worship, all kinds of things. It could be something as intensive as going far away on a mission trip or as mundane and un unglamorous as taking out the trash after 412. The final word that's been added is witness. We ask members to support the ministry of the church through their witness, to live in such a way that you represent your church, that you represent Jesus Christ in a positive and faithful way. It could be sharing your faith with others, or inviting others to come to church or to 412 with you, Maybe it's as simple as saying that we ask you to live in such a way that someone watching you would be able to say, you know, those Right Soul United Methodists sure are good people. So when we become a member of United Methodist Church, we promise to faithfully participate by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, 
our service, and our witness. The church is less than it could be when its members do not take those promises seriously. But i got to tell you, not everyone is going to notice what you do. You won't always get a high five or an attaboy from one of the adults nearby. But I want to close with some encouragement to those of you that plan to take these promises seriously and strive to live them day by day for the rest of your life. Because sometimes it can get discouraging. It can start to feel like what we're doing isn't important, that nobody seems to care, and no one really notices. I want to share the thoughts tonight of a speaker named Nicole Johnson. She's a Christian author, and this comes from a speech that I heard her give on YouTube. Now, she's an adult, and she's speaking primarily as a woman and as a mom, and I think some of the moms out there might really relate to what she has to say. But I think what she says applies to everybody who works within the church year after year and wonders, does anybody notice? Does anybody care? Here are Nicole Johnson's words, and it's titled Invisible Woman. She says, it started to happen gradually. I would walk into a room and say something, and no one would notice. I'd say, turn down the TV, please, and nothing would happen. So I'd get louder. Turn the TV down, please. Finally, I'd have to go over and turn the TV down myself. And then I started to notice it elsewhere. My husband and I had been to a party for about three hours, and I was ready to go. I looked over, and he was talking to a friend from work, and I walked over. He just kept right on talking. He didn't even turn toward me. That's when I started to put it together. He can't see me. I'm invisible. Then I started to notice it more and more. I'd walk, by my son to, I'd walk my son to school, and his teacher would say, Jake, who's that with you? And my son would say, oh, nobody. Granted, he's just five, but nobody? One night, a group of us gathered, and we were celebrating the return of a friend from England. Janice had just taken this fabulous trip, and she was going on and on about the hotel she stayed in, and I was sitting there looking around at the other women at the table. I put my makeup on in the car on the way there. I had on an old dress because it was the only thing clean, and I had my unwashed hair pulled up in a banana clip and was feeling pretty darn pathetic. And then Janice turned to me, and she said, I brought you this. It was a book about the great cathedrals of, each, of Europe. I didn't understand. And then I read the inscription. She wrote, with admiration for the greatness of what you're building when nobody else sees. You see, you can't name the names of the people who built the great cathedrals. Over and over again, looking at these mammoth works, if you scan down to find the names of the builder, it will say, unknown, unknown, unknown. They completed things not knowing that anyone would ever notice that they were behind it. There's a story about one of the builders who was carving a tiny bird inside a beam that would soon be covered over by the roof. And someone came up to him and said, why are you spending so much time on something that no one will ever see? And it's reported the builder said, well, God will see. They trusted that God saw everything. They gave their whole lives for a work, a mammoth work, that they wouldn't even see finished. They showed up day after day, and some of these cathedrals took over a hundred years to build. And that was more than any working person's lifetime. Day after day, they made personal sacrifices for no credit, showing up at a job that they would never see finished for a building that would not get their name on it. One writer even goes on to say, no great cathedrals will ever be built again because so few people are willing to sacrifice to that degree. I closed the book, she said, and it, it was as if God said to me, I see you. You're not invisible to me. No sacrifice is too small for me to notice. I see every cupcake baked, every sequin sewn on, and I see every smile from everybody. I see every tear of disappointment when things don't go the way you want them to go. But remember, you are building a great cathedral. It's not going to be finished in your lifetime. And sadly, you won't even get to live there. But if you build it, I will live there. She says, at times my invisibility has felt like an affliction to me, but it's not a disease that's erasing my life. It's the cure for the disease of self-centeredness. It's the antidote to my pride. It's okay that they don't see. 
It's okay that they don't know. I don't want my son to tell the friend that he's bringing home from college, you're not going to believe what my mom does. She gets up at four in the morning and she bakes and she cleans and she takes care of everything at the house and then she goes to work. And if I do all those things, I don't want him to say that. I just want him to want to come home. And I want him to say to his friend, you're going to love it there. It's okay that they don't see. We don't work for them. We work for him. We sacrifice for him. They may never see. Not if we do it right. Not if we do it well. Let's pray that our work will stand as a monument to a greater God. To add to what Nicole Johnson said, I would add, we don't work for the other folks in the church, and we're not self-employed. We work for God. And nothing we do is unimportant or invisible to God. He hears your every prayer. Even if it seems like no one else notices what you're doing in the church, God sees it. God knows. He knows what you gave up for every class that you showed up to. He knows what you gave up tonight to be here. God sees each gift that you give. God knows what each gift cost you. He knows how much of your heart was attached to that gift. God sees each act of service, no matter how small. He saw when you helped put up the chairs, or when you cleared the tables after dinner at 412, or when you collected food for the needy, or you drove nails on a mission trip. He heard you invite your friend to church, and he heard the words of encouragement that you spoke to someone who was hurting. At times, we feel like we're invisible, like what we do doesn't matter. But remember that God sees it all. God notices, and God cares. Each prayer, each time you're present, each gift, each act of service, each faithful day of witness, they matter to God. They matter to the church. They matter to the Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Will you pray with me? Almighty and everlasting God, Lord, we have been about... An incredible journey. But the journey began even before our classes began because you have been speaking to each person out here. Lord, as they come forward to confirm their faith, I pray that you will bless each person, each family, that your grace will be not just sufficient for tonight but for all their lives, knowing that perhaps no one else notices what they do except you. We know that you notice and you care. Thanks be to God. Amen. Okay, so now we're going to move toward the actual confirmation, and we're going to have a, a series of folks that need to be baptized when they come forward. So um, if there's be something that will be said differently for those who are being baptized and those um, who are being confirmed, we're going to ask those who are being confirmed to remember your baptism and to be thankful for it. But um, so there should be an alphabetical list of all the people that are being confirmed today, right, on your bulletin. Do you see that? Everybody see that? Okay, we're going to be following that. Okay, I don't have my list with me. Who's first, Christina? We have, um, okay. Is it the Brewer, Cameron? The, the, the Bainards. The Bainards. Okay, even better. Shark. I'm not, not better. I shouldn't say that at all. That's terrible. Uh, Shark. Uh, where's Shark? Where's he at? There, Shark. Okay, so Shark. If you'll come up first, and is Cameron after him? Uh, yes. Okay, so the Brewers would be next, okay? But, but not, not yet. They don't need to come up yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, Shark, oh. hang on, hang on, hang on. I just want to tell you what we're doing, okay? So um, we're, when we come forward, I want each family to come forward just following the alphabetical order. So, like, Shark's family, y'all can come on, on here since Shark's already come this way. And, go ahead. and then the Brewers, you'll come up next. You'll just... After Shark comes forward, then come the Brewers, okay? And then who's next on the list? Thank you, Tara, for bringing me this. Buckner. Buckner, great. Okay. Uh, no, Blackwell. Okay. Uh, we left out the Blackwells. Okay. Somebody, somebody saw this ahead of me. Great. Sorry to be confusing. Okay, so the Bainards would be first. You don't need to line up yet. You don't need to line up yet. But when you see the family ahead of you move forward, I want you to come come to the next spot, okay, and to wait there where Christina and Pam are. Does that make sense? Okay? Yes? We'll get it. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Okay, so if you'll turn with me, 
to the insert in your bulletin. We're going to ask the questions of faith to everybody simply where, where you are, to just simply stand where you are. And I'll turn things over to Pastor Christina. I invite you all to um, open up your, um, yep, um, it's as far as I'm going to go. Uh, I invite you all to open up your bulletin to the service of holy baptism and confirmation. And as we read your name, um, confirmands, we invite you to stand where you are. And, um, and then you will uh, stay standing to answer the historic questions that Pastor Doug is going to ask you. Also, if I mess up your name, we are grateful for grace. And so if, if I do, when you're coming up here to be baptized, just whisper in our ear and say the right way to say it. And we are so grateful for y'all's grace. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism. We acknowledge what God is doing for us, and we affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. I present... Cameron Robert Brewer, go ahead and stand where you are and remain standing. Georgia Reese Buckner, Colin Grant Carter, Christopher Borders Davis, James Parker Joyner, Ray Dalton McDonald, and Anna Hayes Pearson for baptism. I present Harrison Corbett Shark Baynard, Taylor Burns Blackwell, Cameron Robert Brewer, Georgia Reese Buckner, Catherine Olivia Burdett, Colin Grant Carter, Christopher Borders Davis, Corbin Gregory Demolina, Elizabeth Ann Dixon, Lucy Hall Eckel. Hannah Grace Ford, John Capron Guggenheimer, Harrison Reed Isier, James Parker Joyner, Kira Ella Kerr, William Everett Lane, Ray Dalton McDonald, Thomas Jackson Mitchell, Campbell Margaret Nethery, Anna Hayes Pearson, Ella Elizabeth Renton, Luke Mitchell Richardson, Shelby Elizabeth Roach, Keener Lane Whitmer, William Cole Whitmer, and Madison Cameron Wright for confirmation. If y'all will remain standing on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, your answer is, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? Do you? And according to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church, and serve as Christ's representatives in the world. Will you? Do you as Christ's body the church reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these people now before you in your care, congregation? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these people with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, we give thanks for all the ways that you use water to give life, to give newness of life, to sustain us throughout this life. Lord, it's also special for cleansing, for cleansing us of our sin, 
and bringing us to new life with Christ. Lord, may the Holy Spirit bless this gift of water and all those who receive it tonight for holy baptism, as well as for all those who remember their baptism this evening. And so now I want to begin by asking Harrison Corbett Shark Baynard to come forward. And if his parents will come forward as well. And Shark, you can kneel here. Yeah, go ahead and kneel. Stay right there you go, right behind him. Alright. And I'm gonna back up so I can do the six feet uh, and try to maintain all of those um, structures that we can keep in place for uh, during this COVID crisis. Harrison Corbett Sharp Baynard, remember your baptism and be thankful. And if everyone would extend a hand, may the Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water in the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Stand. Go back to your seat. Taylor Burns Blackwell, remember your baptism and be thankful. And now I invite you to mentors and family to extend a hand. Taylor, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Cameron Robert Brewer, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can lay hands on Cameron Robert Brewer, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now I invite you all to lay on a hand. Georgia Reese, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you might be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Catherine Olivia Burdett, remember your baptism and be thankful. Now if we extend a hand. Catherine Olivia, may the Holy Spirit work within you, and being born through water in the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we sit in hand? Holy Garrett, may the Holy Spirit work within you, 
that being born through water and the Spirit, you might be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Christopher Borders Davis, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you want to lay hands on me, you can stay there. Christopher Borders, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water in the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Corbin Gregory, remember your baptism and be thankful. And now if you all would like to place a hand on his shoulder. And... Corbin Gregory, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Elizabeth Ann Dixon, remember your baptism and be thankful. We'll extend a hand. Elizabeth Ann, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lucy Hall Eckel, remember your baptism and be thankful. If you all want to lay a hand on her. Lucy Hall, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Anna Grace Ford, remember your baptism and be thankful. If you'd like to lay hands on her. Anna Grace, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. John Caprin Guggenheimer, remember your baptism and be thankful. And if y'all would like to lay a hand. John Caprin, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you might be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Harrison Reed, I see her. Remember your baptism and be thankful. You want to lay hands on her? Harrison Reed, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. James Parker Joyner, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you all to lay a hand. James Parker, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you might be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. We use lots of water up here. Kira, Ella, may the hope may I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Y'all want to lay hands on? Kira, Ella, may the Holy Spirit work within you. That being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. William Everett Lane, remember your baptism and be thankful. If you all would like to extend a hand. William Everett, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you might be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Dalton, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Y'all have to lay hands on Ray Dalton, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thomas Jackson Mitchell, remember your baptism and be thankful. You all would like to lay a hand. Thomas Jackson, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you might be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Campbell, Margaret, Nethery, remember your baptism and be thankful. Would you like to lay hands on it? Campbell, Margaret, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Anna Hayes Pearson, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If y'all would like to lay on a hand. <laughs> Anna Hayes, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Ella Elizabeth Renton, remember your baptism and be thankful. Like lay hands on Ella Elizabeth, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Luke Mitchell Richardson, remember your baptism and be thankful. We'd like to lay a hand. Luke Mitchell, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Shelby Elizabeth Roche, remember your baptism and be thankful. Shelby Elizabeth, may the Holy Spirit work within you, and being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Keener Lane Whitmer, remember your baptism and be thankful. Y'all would like to lay on a hand? Keener Lane, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. William Cole Whitmer, remember your baptism and be thankful. William Cole, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water in the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Madison Cameron writes, remember your baptism and be thankful. If you would like to place a hand. Madison Cameron, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you might be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Madison, don't get too far. Madison, don't get too far. I'm going to ask all of the confirmands if they will come up and find one of these dots on the stairs to come and stand. If you'll remain standing facing your parents and other guests as you answer these historic questions. As members of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, your answer is, I will. And as members of this congregation at Wrightsville United Methodist, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, your answer is, I will. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Don't move, don't move, don't move. Parents, this is your chance to take a picture of the 2020 confirmation class, so if you'd like to do so. And as they're doing so, as they're getting into position, why don't we give a big hand to our uh, latest compliment? <laughs> this would not have been possible, however, without the help of a fantastic group of mentors who spent countless hours um, with our confirmation class this year. And I just want to thank them and give you a chance to thank them as well. That includes Kim Gilbert, 
Courtney Wilson, Dave Wilson, of course, Christina Turner was one of our uh, leaders, Hope Brewer, Dave Brewer, and Lauren Smith, who's not with us tonight, and of course, uh, Christina Norble and Pam Hutzel uh, did a tremendous work in helping to organize this, and I just want to give a round of applause to all of our mentors for the time that they spent. I invite you to return to your seats. Will you come and follow me if I would call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my love be known? Will you let my life be grown in you? And you and me. Will you leave yourself behind if I would call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer with you and you and me? Lord, your summons echoes true when I would call your name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go. Where your love and footsteps show Thus I'll move and live and grow in you And you in me We have turned this soundstage into a holy and sacred space tonight. What a beautiful evening. What a great way to conclude our confirmation class for 2020. Um, what a special moment uh, this has been in the life of our church. Confirmands, I want you to get out that compass that I gave to you, that the confirmation class gave to you. And I want you to remember that Jesus is your true north and that we are to follow him. And the best way to do so is to remember those promises that we have made tonight, to always support the work of of his church through our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. And that will keep us on the right path. Go forth in peace. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Good night. God forgave my sin in Jesus' name. I've been born again in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name, I will share his love and share his love as he told me. He says, please, please, you have to be free.